series. Hello again, everyone. I'm Bob Kurtz, along with our expert commentator, Mike Galloway, and we've got a good one tonight here at the Big A. Boy, Bob, we've got a great show. 6,200-pound modified trucks, 7,200-pound modified tractors, outstanding monster trucks, the Budweiser Boss, Art Arfons, Dusty Arfons, just to name a few of them. They're the best. Well, we're expecting a crowd somewhere around 50, 55, perhaps as many as 60,000 fans here tonight. And generally you get those type of crowds when you bring out the monster trucks, particularly Bigfoot. Bigfoot is here tonight as well as a number of other monster trucks that will be doing some exhibition car crunching and just over a few moguls. A lot of exciting things going to happen here tonight with pulling track. Looks excellent. Oh, another thing going, we have the Budweiser boss going against Bigfoot at an exhibition. First time ever, the Budweiser boss against Bigfoot. Both of them very powerful machines, both of them monster trucks. I'd hate to call a winner on that one tonight. We'll have to wait and see. Well, call a winner, we will. So stay with us. We'll find out who wins that and all the rest of the stuff. So stay with us. This is the Budweiser United States Hot Rod Association Truck and Tractor Pool. In Anaheim, California, as we told you, the home of baseball's California Angels. And you can see that the regular baseball portion of the field here is completely covered with dirt. You can see the infield in the lower left-hand part of your screen. And we zoom now, Mike, towards the starting line down towards the left field foul pole. Well, the weight transfer, the sled sits there on the starting line, and this is where the puller will hook to the sled for the first time. This is quite an unusual situation tonight as the pullers will take two pulls and the distances will be added together. Now, there's a good shot of the course. We were down on the track a little bit earlier, and the traction seems to be very, very good. Down that baseline there, and that's third base running towards home. Right there's the finish line area. That's where they'll unhook, they'll cool for a moment, and then they'll start back up from the first base up towards the uh, towards first base area. And out towards right field. Right field. There's finish line there. The distances we taken added together. And there's where our winner will come from tonight. This is gold run. Very close to a full pull. Well, that's Phil Townsend out of Barstow, California, with a 77 GMC and a 481 cubic inch injected GMC motor. A great pull for Phil. Phil has a very good running truck. You notice right there at the finish line, the truck got to bounce it a little bit on him. He was putting all the power to the ground, doing everything that the Gold Rush could possibly keep. Looking for that full pull of the mark. He's a little bit short, but he's going to set the pace for the rest of the guys to follow. Now, there's the pull for Gold Rush. His first pull, 192 feet, six and a half inches. We told you just shy of the full pull, which would be 200 feet. Here's the Popeye Express, Mike Hartrow. Sun Valley, California. This man's got a hook that you're putting out the door. 70 miles of Chevrolet, and he's working to the end of it. Working to the end, and he's going to wind up a little bit shy. Looks like he's also a shy of the rush by Gold uh, Rush. A good hook for the Popeye truck. 70 model Chevrolet with a 510 cubic inch Chevrolet motor under the hood. These guys like the Chevrolet motors in the, in the pulling industry. They build low end power, and that's the name of the game in the pull world. You need some of that low end torque to get that sled out of the hole, get the weight to moving, and put it down to the big end of the track. There's the pull now for Popeye Express, 181 feet, two inches, which still leaves him a good uh, about 11 feet behind uh, Gold Rush. Cajun Cajun comes up short. Dave Martin out of Riverside, California. Here's the second pull now for Gold Rush. 192 feet, six and a half inches on his first pull. And we'll add this figure to his score. Rolls the slack out of the chain. He's going to hammer the Gold Rush truck. He knows he's in the lead. He needs a good hook. told that almost no one would get a full pull going from home plate out towards right field. Well, a beautiful job. Just an absolute super job. Drove the truck just right. The truck had the traction, had the horsepower tonight. This could be a man to beat tonight. Before it's all over with, Bob, this may be a man that could take all the money home. Let's get a replay now on Gold Rush. You got a good look there at Bill Thompson. Left with the truck real hard. He just 
laid it on the floor. All the tires hooked up just right, and he's in for a real good ride. Now, one thing about Phil, he'll watch that out-of-bounds marker on the left-hand side. Doesn't want the truck too close. He knows the traction's good right down the middle of it, and that's where he's keeping the Gold Rush GMC is right down the middle of the track. This guy had a combination tonight that's just unbelievable. There you can see Gold Rush, one of the 92 feet, six and a half inches on the first pull, and a big 212.6 on the second, and then about a 250-foot track, we understand, extending out towards the right field line, which adds up to the 405 feet, one half inch. 405, and you know, that really sounds a little bit strange, but that's going to be the mark to beat tonight, 405 and 5, and I think it's going to be a respectable mark all evening long. Here's Popeye Express, Mike Hargrove, second pull. a very decent pull down towards the right field foul pole. He had to have one. Now there's the total on Popeye Express. He's going to wind up about uh, 25 feet or so shy of our leader. First pole, 181 feet, 2 inches, and you can see the second one just under uh, 200 feet, and it adds up to 380. Here comes the judge, Ted Duncan, out of Hollister, California. This will be his first pull. This is a 1958 Chevrolet truck, and you know, a 1958 Chevrolet truck, most of the trucks you see, oh, 59 Chevrolet truck. But most of the trucks you see are all the late model. Well, here's a 59 model, and it is sharp. Got the flames and all the good-looking equipment. Big alcohol-injected Chevrolet motor, and watch it work, because he can. back to what you said earlier it's the first 50 feet and the first 50 feet didn't make it for here comes the judge well the here comes the judge broke the truck there's something broke in the drive line the front tires were doing all they could the motor was screaming wide open the rear tires wasn't working so he broke a drive line a rear axle somewhat where in that area there's some parts broke in the back of that truck Jim Mosby Las Palos, California, in Videodrome, his first pull. He owns a video store called the Videodrome. 468 cubic inches. He's been in it about three years and making quite a name for himself. This guy is a true competitor and a, does a great job at it. pull for video drill. Well, Bobby had the wick turned up on it tonight. An excellent job, but it's going to end up short. He's going to have to come back around when he goes over to that number two track and lay one of those full pull blasts down to get into that number one spot. But there's a man that's very capable of doing that. Mosby. Now the judge will try again. The first pull, 76 feet, eight and a half inches. Well, Bob... I mentioned that I thought he had something broke in that truck, that the rear tires didn't seem to be doing their job. Well, they haven't had time to repair it. We will see if maybe he just had the transfer gate in two-wheel drive, or is there something broken? He's going to go for the best of the two on this path. Watch the rear tires. Let's see if they do their job this time around, because they sure wasn't doing it on the first path. Here comes the judge. Basically the same problem again. Front tires are doing all the work. The rear tires are along for the ride, and you can't win one of these competitions in two-wheel drive. And I'll tell you what, he'd like to, but it's just not in the cards for the judge tonight. And here's Great Babe Jr., Bud Davidson, out of Reno, Nevada, with his first uh, crack at it tonight. Past president of the Florida Truck and Tractor Pool. <laughs> Well, this gentleman's driving a 1986 GMC, and this is a 665 cubic inch Rodak, and that's an all aluminum version of a Chevrolet. Watch this truck work. And we have a full pull. He goes the distance, the first truck to do so on the number one track. Beautiful job. The truck sounded great all the way down. This man's a true pro. He's been in this sport for 15 years almost since the beginning. And it is. It's the first full pull of this track. 
a beautiful job for a fine, fine competitor. Mark Sorelli out of Hollister, California, Garfield Express. What a beautiful 1965 Chevrolet stepside truck. Lurking under the hood is one of those awesome 588 cubic inch aluminum Rodex. Now, John Rodex designed this motor and originally built it for drag boat racing. But it's found a home in this pool world, and when it found a home in the pool world, they just marked it awesome because that's all they've been since they found their way into this sport. It's going to have to be awesome here to match some of our scores. Watch this Garfield truck. He can do it. Going to wind up short. The Garfield Express truck run into some trouble right at about the 100 foot mark, and it may have not been that far down the track. He... Have another look at it here, Mike. Right in this area, the Garfield truck, motor starts going down on it, and of course the sled's already got the weight box moved up on him, and it's too late to repair or, or try to comprehend for anything that's happened, and it just got the best of him right there. But he'll come back around to that number two track and give it his best shot. Back with more in a moment, this is the Budweiser United States Hot Rod Association Truck and Tractor Pull. Here is Gray Pate Jr. pitches up to Vesletti at a full pull. The only truck to do so so far on track number one. A 207 would give him just a little bit of a pad, not much. This man will not satisfy with just a little bit of a pad. You can bet that he's looking at the whole 250 foot. He sits there, and the Rodak motor is building a little bit of heat. He's got the chains are hooked up. The kill switch is in place. Slack comes out of the chain. There's no jerk start. Got to leave with a tighter taut chain. He's got the chain real tight. What? Got to go a little better than 205. On Grape 8 Jr., Bob Davidson has just laid down a mark that got the guys scratching their heads. They think they can do it, which is going to find out before it's all over with. But what a beautiful job for that man right there out of Reno, Nevada. Well, full and full and full as a score. Left with the sled and a beautiful job once again of driving for Bob right down the side of the track he had to hammer laid in it all the way down just looks like it's going to the house and it does got his head out the window that's a driving style that he's probably had for several years a beautiful job and right there blows it out the gate full pull will we have a pull off well we're about to find out it's just gonna take moments before we know the rat patrol truck chet longacre will roll the slack out of the chain he's Got the CPEC tires cut just the way he wants them. He has to go the distance, the 250 feet on his second pull to high Grape Ape Jr. He can do it. He really can. And, and well, his first full pull didn't seem to take that much effort. Oh, I think the truck probably got out easier than the Grape Ape truck did. We're going to find out right now. Looking good. Did he make it or not? I believe he's short. Oh, it looked like he was headed for the full pull. Really did. I thought he did it. Getting into the truck real hard. It's wide open right there. The truck's got good ground speed. Everything's working in his direction. Everything's on right. Did the sled get him or did he take it all the way out? That's the decision. He may be just a little bit short. And if he did, we lost that pull-off tonight. The game of inches, huh? Game of inches. We may have just seen inches take its toll. Rat Patrol coming up just a bit short. Great first pull where she went the distance. Second pull, he came up just a, a little bit under 16 and a half feet uh, shy of the finish line, and he's going to have to settle for second place. You can see the Great Babe Junior, a winner. Back-to-back -back full pulls, 200 feet, followed by a 250-footer. Rat Patrol winding up second, and one trick pony, our third truck. Not sure if the phrase fits, but if there's a first family, 
in this sport, the Arfons family is the family that comes to my mind. No doubt about it, this is a father, son, and daughter team. And right uh, there is the star fire of Timmy Arfons. There's Timmy's quad runner, jet-powered quad runner. Right behind that's the green monster of Dad Art Arfons. And then back just a little bit further, kind of nestled in the middle, is Dusty's Dragon Lady. So this is true family sport, father, son, and daughter team. And Jim Duff takes a look. How much longer do you figure you can realistically keep going at this? Till I die. <laughs> Maybe die in the in the cockpit of the Green Monster? Wouldn't that be neat? 60-year-old <laughs> Art Arfons is only half kidding when he talks about how neat it would be to end it all in the cockpit of the Green Monster, a notorious-looking machine that has become a star in the world of truck and tractor pull. But then, so has its master, a quiet, soft-spoken man who could pass for your uncle or your grandfather. Art Arfons is a big name in this sport, but in his family, he's not the only celebrity. We have a different family life than what everybody else would have, so I wouldn't know what a normal family life's like. But this is, I wouldn't trade it for the world. The sport of truck and tractor pulls also includes this young lady, 21-year-old Dusty Arfons, known in the circuit as the Dragon Lady. She grew up following her famous father and then joined him as a driver two years ago. My daughter graduated uh, from high school, and I asked her if she wanted to go to college or a tractor, and she said, I want a tractor. <laughs> Save me some money. For a long time, I was Art's son, and now I'm starting to become Dusty's brother. <laughs> <laughs> Someday you'll get your own identity. Uh, the bike's going to do it. They're going to know who Turbo Tim is. Turbo Tim is the third member of the Arfons who makes his living behind the wheel of some souped-up, man-made machine. Lately, he's been riding the sport's first jet-powered quad racer. With 1,500 pounds of thrust, this thing would blow him right out of the stadium if he wasn't careful. And like his father and sister, a little crazy as well. Round, round, get around, I get around, yeah, get around, round, round. No doubt about it. He's the best there ever was, and there's no way I'm ever going to top him. If I get on the same level as him, I'll be real happy. Hmm. My sister, she's coming along real good, and I'm sure she's going to make it big. One look at Dusty's eyes tells you of her desire to make it big in a sport dominated by men, and specifically, her father and brother. Since my brother pulled with this tractor, it was years ago when equipment wasn't up. You know, this tractor is 10 or 11 years old now, so it's pretty outclassed. And he says, well, I used to win with it against this guy and this guy and this guy, even though they've added engines since then. So. <laughs> I see. So Big Brother's always watching. Huh? Oh, he loves to tease me. Back in 1952, the master of the green monster worked as a laborer in a feed mill making about 50 bucks a week. Now, he makes a good living traveling with his family and performing in front of fans all over the country. Last year, the Arfons traveled some 70,000 miles together, took part in about 80 events, and enjoyed each and every minute of their unusual lifestyle. It's fun. You see different people and different, you know, learn a little bit about each city, and it's fun. Fun for their many fans, and a kick for the Arfons of Akron, Ohio, better known as the Dragon Lady, Turbo Tim, and the Green Monster. A family that's always together, and always on the go. This quality moment in sports is brought to you by Ford of Canada, where quality is more than a commitment. Quality is job one. Ford proudly salutes the ultimate in performance and success. Wednesday night in Toronto, the Leafs and the Blackhawks in a key matchup for a playoff in the Norris Division. Denny Savard shows what Danny Gallivan would call a Savardian spinorama. Savard working around, losing his left shoot, score! Chicago goes on to beat Toronto 6-3, and Savard goes on to pick up the natural hat trick.
Mercury Tracer, the import that Ford built. Now at your Mercury dealer. Hey, Tracer. Here's Art Arbonz as we begin the 7,200-pound modified tractor competition. Oh, double-headed green monster. Art with his twin turbines. Look at this. Fire coming out of both motors, and he is on go. These are T-64 GE motors. Watch out. just as hard as he could but he kept it under control he had the power to the ground and i don't think two sleds could have stopped the green monster on that path now he came roaring down the stretch right about here is when art goes full power on the turbine you ease into them they've got instant response watch the the right hand that's where all the throttle comes in tire speed probably turning those great huge tires about a hundred miles an hour front end comes up and art knows he's in for a ride touches the brake comes down and brings him around he's he's really got a rough ride on it i tell you what art is just riding it out for everything he's worth but it doesn't keep him from going full full tonight well they call it big blue three and big blue three has three engines 7200 pound modified dragster tractor class no cubic inch limitation no motor limitation run any kind of pressurized fuel system you want there's big blue three three five hundred and twenty four cubic inch heat black hemi mike is a professional puller he's just moved recently now makes his home in little town pennsylvania i'll tell you what this man is a fine puller he is truly a gentleman and a scholar at this sport been doing it what 10 years been doing it about 10 years 1985 national champion of the united states hot rod association another full pull. Oh, what a job. Mike Hoff made a beautiful judgment right there up towards the latter part of that track. And there's some of that 10-year driving skill came in. and Right there is where Mike Hoff drops the hammer on Big Blue. And just the moment you're going to see where Mike Hoff makes a real good decision. And I think the decision kept him in for a full pull. Now the front end comes up. He's got the traction but the tractor is drifting towards the outside. It's trying to go out of bounds. Mike Hoff sees it's going to make it. He doesn't hit the brakes, doesn't slow the momentum down, just keeps on the power. It stays right between the lines and out the door. Out of uh, White Wright, Texas, Ed Anderson at the control. Ed Anderson. I'll tell you what, Eddie Anderson's been at this sport as long as anyone. 12 years. Campaigns of paratractors. The three triple engine well it's triple engine alcohol injected big box chevrolets built by jerry janky out of san antonio texas and jerry builds some of the strongest big box chevrolets in the country and he's got five of them three on this tractor and two on the other one gotta go full pull art arfons and mike hall made that claim first out and he knows he's got his work cut out for him let's see if he can put one together tonight the texas wrangler out of white right texas Waiting for the green flag now for Ed Anderson. And again, full pull. Art Arfons, green monster. Mike Hoff, blue three. And now the Texas Wrangler. Got off to a tough start. And never did really get it going. Tire speed and track combination just didn't match up for the Texas Wrangler tonight. Ed eases out on the clutch, goes straight on to the throttle. Butterflies open immediately. Tire speed comes up, and when that happens, the power's on top of you. The tire speed may be just a little much for this track, or, or maybe not quite enough may be the factor on this one. Just couldn't turn the tires hard enough to get that ground speed because they're putting that 50,000 pounds of weight on them immediately tonight in this 7,200-pound tractor class. Here's the dragon lady, Dusty Arfons, only woman that I'm aware of in this sport. Lots of ladies in the sport. Dusty is one of the fine lady tractor pullers 
in the country. This young lady does an outstanding job with it. She runs a T-58. This is a smaller type turbine than her father ran uh, with the Green Monster. Dusty's a professional tractor puller. Has been for three years. She has. She, and I must say, does an outstanding job. She was, uh, I believe, third or fourth place last year. She was in the top five last year in the national point standing. Told us that uh, she drove this particular tractor for the first time on her 18th birthday. That's right. And uh, this particular tractor was built and campaigned for a number of years by her brother, Tim Arfont, who we saw with his jet funny car a moment ago. Will we see fire in this one, too? We'll see lots of fire like that. It's lit and ready to ride. The Dragon Lady. Dusty Arfine, she makes her home in Akron, Ohio. Looks like she's sputtered a bit. Something real strange for a, a jet turbine. Very seldom do you hear one of them pop or bang like that. And uh, it could be something expensive inside the motor. Another look at it, Mike. Watch that left hand. She's into the throttle all the way right there. Cut her eyes over and check to see where Dad was on the track. And right in there, the motor sputters. There it is. Pops back twice. Something some kind of detonation coming off inside of that uh, T-58 GE motor. Here's Art Arfons again in the Green Monster. Art Arfons out of Akron. Now, we're in the pull-off situation. Mike Hoff has lost oil pressure on the back motor on Big Blue. So he will not be able to come back. But for Art Arfons to be declared the winner, he's got to move that sled a measurable distance. Measurable distance can be an inch, a foot. We'll just see how Art comes about it tonight. You know, Art Arfond is not known to do anything the easy way. If he was just gonna do things the easy way, he'd have automobile motors, not Arfond. He's got jets. We've already seen his son say, shut him down, but Art doesn't seem to think so. Well, for Art Arfond's sake, I hope that it's a bad gauge because he's gonna go with it. Hand has moved to the throttle. There's the light up. Watch this, no telling what's gonna happen as Art Arfon goes in the pull-off. There he goes. Now he's won it right there. But look at this, look at this, Art Arfon's still in it. He's still dragging it. All the way out the end, the box topped on him. Art Arfon takes it all the way out. Back to back, full pole for Art Arfon. What a tremendous job from Art Arfon, Green Monster. He's still looking at that gauge, Bob. There are your final results of the 7,200-pound dragster tractor competition. Art Arfon's the Green Monster, the winner. Big Blue three with a full pull, but then having to leave. And then Texas Wrangler. Three strong tractors. Unfortunately, Mike lost the top motor on the back on the big blue three. I'd have liked to see him come back and go up against the green monster. Congratulations now by Tim Arfons. You can see Dusty Arfons there as Tim now heads out towards the track and a little bit of an exhibition here, which is supposed to be quite a sight to see here on the Kamikaze. A jet-powered quad runner. Tim built the jet-powered quad runner. Now, this is a, a turbine engine that Tim converted to a jet and built an afterburner for. Checking it out. Listen. Look at the flame out of that. Tim describes this as a plop bottle rocket with handlebars on it, and it's very well good. Look at the brakes just doing all they can to hold it. First time he's been on dirt with it. Whoa! What a ride! And I mean, he was just in it for a moment. Just in it for a fraction of a moment. Had to jump on the binders. I believe he's going to come around and do it again. This is unbelievable. Oh. 
And we're talking about firing a hole for Tim Arbonne. He turns it loose and just for a fraction of a moment, opens the parachute to shut it down and heads out into the outside area. Boy, what a... You wish we had a longer track here. Oh, no doubt about it. Would I like to see that thing run for a mile or so? He go back to Akron, Ohio, and I don't think it needs wings. One thing about it, you wouldn't want to take that out in the, the woods and try it because you'd blow them out. Bigfoot. Out of St. Louis, Missouri. Bob Chandler's the guy that started the craze. He did that. Believe the man be the first one to build a monster truck and this is the brand new 1987 version of Bigfoot. There's what five five Bigfoot and was one Ms. Bigfoot. Right now I believe they've got six of the trucks currently. This is the brand new and three Predator carburetors sitting on top of a supercharged Hemi Ford motor. Full race Hemi Ford motor. Now, here's the battle coming up. Bigfoot against Bud Boss. There's the 1987 version of Bigfoot right there. Supercharged Hemi Ford motor and a 1987 Ford truck. Of course, Bigfoot Blue, and it is a beautiful truck. Brand new truck, and first time it's been out this way. Bob Chandler out of St. Louis, Missouri, who started the original monster truck back in 1973. Tell you what, Bob's been an innovator in more more things than just the the uh, monster truck. Gonna battle the Budweiser boss. Budweiser boss. Bigfoot, Bigfoot, putting it through his faces. Look at that, pulling the slam. There's the the weight box is stopped, and Bigfoot just keeps right on trucking. Oh, look at this! He's taking it out. He's taking it out. He's got the weight all the way up. He drug it completely out of the stadium. He drug it out of the stadium. Unbelievable exhibition of power from Bigfoot. Here comes the Budweiser boss now running from the left field line as Bigfoot, I think, could have dragged that thing right out through the parking lot and on into I-5. Watch the Budweiser boss. This is twin supercharged Hemi motors. I don't know what he'll do. I mean, he's on a track by himself. They've moved the sled. Get ready. Here comes the twin blown Budweiser boss. Turn the corner! Can you believe that? We've seen one tremendous exhibition of power. Gary Collins turned the corner with the weight box on top of him. We have just seen two of the most awesome four-wheel drive pulling vehicles in the country. Gary Collins, and there's Bigfoot. Now watch the Bigfoot truck as he starts out down the track. Everything's going just the way it should. He's got it all hooked up, and when he finds the traction and the power of that supercharged Hemi Ford hooking up, right there, gets a little bit of weight on him. He just grabs another gear, and look at this, right out of the stadium. Look at this, Budweiser boss jumps on it right in the hole, and I mean, he is really getting it. Watch that six-pack of Budweiser on that 50,000-pound weight transfer machine top out. Budweiser boss says that's no problem, just turns left and keeps right on going. Right around the corner, the guy on the back of that sled has really got a heck of a ride that time. I'll stay with us because coming up following the intermission, uh, what many people consider to be the main event of these things, the monster trucks. Oh, it is going to be wild tonight. Lots and lots of good monster trucks on hand tonight. Of course, Bigfoot's here. Bigfoot's here. He is the monster truck industry. Oh, and they're all after him tonight. We're liable to see action at just second to none. Some of the best monster truck racing in the history will be happening tonight. So stay with us. Monster trucks coming up next. Galloway Battle of the Monster Trucks. Here at the Big A in Anaheim, you're looking at Super Pete. Mike Welsh out of Bellingham, Washington. All set to run in the first heat. Got some, uh, some wild action that's going to take place here this evening. Here's Showtime. This is Brian Shell. He's out of, out of your hometown, Detroit, Michigan. Pete is just ripping them and riding. Showtime. 
time is stuck. Over the first six cars. Here comes Super Pete going, taking his infield turn now. Down the back He's got six away. cars lined up. Oh, 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 Super Pete just about bought it. Now Showtime has finally gotten over his first hurdle. Don't count Showtime out because he can come back and come back strong. I believe he just... Look at, look at this. Look at the Pete. The Pete is flying over those cars. He's got it now. What a comeback. Mike Welt is doing a great job. The minute he finishes on the last car and the rear wheels touch, Super Pete's the winner. There's Mike and a beautiful job with Super Pete. He goes home a winner tonight. Look at this. He almost lost it right there. Slid off to the right and when he did, the truck veered off that way and the weight almost pulled that truck over on its side. We're very lucky. Mike's very lucky that he got out of that one. Well, you're looking at hot stuff. Jeff Bainter is in his first competition. He's been at this sport only two months. 1986 CJ7 weighs 13,500 pounds. And there's Leadfoot with Brian Dennis. Makes his home in Flagstaff, Arizona. And this is an El Camino monster truck. This ought to be quite a race. Green flag down. Here we go. Hot stuff jumps out early. And... Uh oh, uh oh. Broke the wheel off. Broke the wheel off. Went up on its nose. My heavens, look at that. Wheel broke off. Hot stuff has to complete the round. But Leadfoot broke the wheel. Broken axle off of the El Camino. There. There's Brian getting out of that truck and doing it in a hurry. Hot stuff. Hot stuff is enjoying a win this time around, but it'll never get any easier, will it? it he won't just this competition. Now that tire and wheel laying there on the ground weighs over 1,000 pounds, so it, it's not something that you just pick up and go with. I would venture to say that uh, Brian is shook just a little bit. It's an expensive proposition. Jeff, all he has to do is cross the final six cars and come out a winner. And he's going to take it slow and easy the way he should. Jumps up on top. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Right on across. And down it goes. So hot. Jeff Boehner. And his first competition comes away here at Anaheim a winner. Ryan Cardiff and Hawaiian Punch. Hawaiian Punch up here. Truck out of there, and Hawaiian Punch got a quick lead, but right now, Flying High makes it up. Flying High now taking a lead. Hawaiian Punch is in some trouble. Hawaiian Punch is in trouble motor-wise. Flying High is flying high right this minute. And Hawaiian Punch is smoking. Mark Dye is doing a job on him from Phoenix, Arizona. This is a little supercharged Chevrolet motor in this beautiful little truck and i'll tell you what watch out he's gonna get them all the way up whoa Almost hold on hold on that little quick agile truck is doing a heck of a job tonight right there that marks him out a winner tonight flying high mark die out of phoenix arizona match the name on that one he's flying high just all had a little bit of difficulty at the start of the six cars piled in the infield but caught him right here. Right here. Bumps the cars and gets up. The back tires just don't carry on top of the car before the front one does land. All he does then is just mash the pedal a little bit, jumps up on top of them, has to mash it just a little bit harder. And when he does, everything gets right on flying high. And it's clear sailing from there. Monster truck competition continues here in Anaheim. Barefoot, Fred Schaefer out of Granite City, Illinois, down by St. Louis. Supercharged alcohol-burning big block Chevrolet in the Fred Schaefer's Barefoot. Of course, this is the truck that 
was in the ZZ Top sleeping bag video. And then there's the toy. Romeo, Michigan, which is near Detroit. Joe Renke is the owner in the driver. Here we go. Watch, watch Fred the toy is wanting this victory. And this is a close race in anybody's race at this time. Barefoot slides in. He's heading for those six cars. Watch out. We're liable to see daylight underneath him. Oh, look at that. High in the air, and he's still going. It's a close race as they head down to the straightaway. Yeah, here comes the toy. Fred Schaefer's going to make the swing. The toys get off. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, upside down. Fred Schaefer has just flipped barefoot. Let's hope he's all right. And the toy is going to come home a winner, but he tried to take that turn way too quickly. Fred had the power down on it absolutely too hard. When he turned it, the tires bit the ground, rolled on the edge, and when they did that, the truck went on over. Fred's out of the car. Fred's out of the truck right there, Fred. Great to see that he's all right. Right there, the tires bit in, and Fred goes right over on the lid and rolls on over on the top of it. What kind of safety features do they have built in there, Mike? They've got a roll cage there, and, and hopefully it held up, and then it did hold up en enough that Fred wasn't injured. Of course, he wears the helmet. He's got the, the shoulder harness, the seat belt on him, and there's Fred. And Fred doesn't want to he doesn't want to leave his truck right now. That, that, that truck's Fred's pride and joy. And barefoot comes from Fred's two pet black bears. Awesome Kong with a, a V12 Allison aircraft engine and Monster Mag with a big block Chevrolet and it's close at this time. Awesome Kong got a small lead. Monster Mag is making up some time and Monster Mag is going to make his turn. Awesome Kong heads down the straightaway. Awesome Kong in the lead, but he's still got a lot of ground to cover. Monster Mash just now attacking the cars. He's about three car lengths behind. Awesome Kong out of Colleen, Texas, and he takes the lead. Should have this one won. They might well driving in the second race tonight. Mike owns a pair of these trucks. Right now, it's Awesome Kong. Look out, look out, look out. Monster Mash may pull off an upset. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I don't think that Monster Mash came off with both tires off the back end of his last car. Don't believe he did. Don't believe he did. I think it's the wind's going to go to Awesome Car. A Bigfoot is here, Mike, and is going to make a special run tonight. Going to let the guys take a look at the man to beat right here. Seeing how the truck's handling over the cars, and it's doing great. Him kind of airing it out, and he'll air the motor. He's got quite a run at those six cars. Watch this. He could very well clear all of those cars. Let's see how he lines up. Got everything on go. Could take it this time. Check it out. Oh, wow. High in the air for Bigfoot as he just crutches a bunch. Just the last heap or two remaining, and they're pretty well mashed out. I'll tell you what, Bigfoot's not going to help matters in the lead. Jim heading around the working them over taking a rough ride up and over up and over outstanding job as usual by bigfoot that's what they paid to see and they come out at bigfoot closing the show here at the big a in anaheim this has been a presentation of bud sports through the facilities of espn some crazy